So please, let's welcome Anne Lacaton. Thank you uh, very much for your invitation and to be so many uh, tonight. I would like to start with a um, very brief uh, personal words because uh, for me, uh, I didn't know that I will give the lecture in uh, this uh, place because it was supposed to be first at the university. Uh, but I feel very, very happy to be, uh, to be here. I've never been here before. It's my first visit in Porto, but I know this place. Uh, and this place uh, reminds me of a wonderful person, uh, Isabel, uh, who uh, ran in this place very interesting events. And uh, I didn't took part, but Jean-Philippe took part of uh, some of these events. She was a friend, and I remember very nice stories that, that she told about this theater, and especially a workshop about uh, architecture. Uh, Again, I was not here, but I know that uh, it's still, uh, this workshop is still in the memory of those uh, who took part uh, to it. So it, it was just um, something that uh, came to my mind in coming here. Freedom of use. Architecture is about freedom, generosity, pleasure, far beyond any aesthetic and formal determination, beyond the rules, beyond standards and programs, Buildings are beautiful when people feel well inside, when the light inside is beautiful and the air is pleasant, when the exchange with the outside seems easy and gentle, and when uses and sensations are unexpected. The freedom of use, the capacity of space, the flexibility to give possibility of appropriation, to give importance to people and uses are the important qualities we aim in designing the projects. They are based in uh, two important elements. First, the generosity of space, extra space, oversized space, which allows freedom and allows to go beyond programs and beyond the conventions. The second is open structures, very little constraining for the space, and open space that can, can provide capacity. The freedom of use refers to the concept of inhabiting, which is very important for us in uh, designing the projects. Inhabiting conveys pleasure, generosity, the freedom to occupy a space beyond the functional. It, challenge, it challenges us to think about the possibilities and the capacity of the space around and ahead of oneself. The space for living or for any use must be generous, comfortable, adaptable, flexible, luxurious, and affordable. Generosity of space, freedom of use, means giving more space to each for any program to make possible adaptation and appropriation. This means building larger. Our aim is to build as much extra space as programmed space. This extra space has not a defined function. It is free for uses. The idea of luxury is therefore redefined in terms of generosity, freedom of use, and pleasure. This works simultaneously and inseparably with the economy in order to make this luxury standard affordable and democratic. Economy not to restrain, but as a salutary constraint, as a tool of freedom, which leads to be more inventive and allows to give more in the same cost. Every project, every place permit invention, generosity and imagination to reinvent ways of thinking space and ways of inhabiting. So through... Uh, Is it a... Yes, thank you. So reinvent inhabiting. It's about uh, how to make space for, uh, for living. 
means more generosity of space, more comfort and freedom, pleasure and luxury uh, for all. That was um, our intention when we designed this house. That was um, our first project in uh, 1992, and uh, we like to go on uh, showing this project because it's still very important for us and uh, in our work. In this project, as uh, young architects, we experienced and uh, implemented um, many intentions, many positions, many intuitions uh, that we have uh, continued to develop afterwards and which are still important in our work. And we acquired through uh, this project a great knowledge and a lot of freedom in the way of thinking and in the way of uh, doing architecture. This is a, a little house for uh, um, a couple of, uh, with two children uh, we, who had a very small budget and uh, they, uh, they have the desire of uh, building um, their, first, uh, their first house. And uh, our uh, aim, and we were strongly involved in this aim, uh, was to um, move away, far away, of the standards of housing. We were really involved to propose to this family something which was really different of uh, the little houses that they could uh, expect if they were uh, contacting uh, uh, or buying a house on, uh, on a catalogue. And the second point is uh, also based on um, the idea of uh, uh, how to work uh, naturally with the climate. So this house, is, uh, the cost of this house was uh, 65,000 euros when uh, we did it in 1992. And the house is 180 square meters, when for the same cost they could expect 70, 75 square meters. So it's based on a very large envelope, uh, coming from the, um, the technology of the greenhouses that we really studied carefully very early in our career, and as well as when we were students, because we, we observed that uh, the agricultural uh, greenhouses have a very strong quality to, uh, uh, to use the natural resources of, of sun, of ventilation. And our idea was to use this technology uh, to uh, develop houses. And uh, this house used this technology with this, good, this greenhouse of uh, uh, 60 uh, square meters on ground, six meters high. And the house is developed as a, a wooden box uh, that uh, is inside the envelope and uh, which takes advantage of the uh, interior uh, climate, which is uh, a prepared climate from um, different from the, the, the outside. So intuitively, we had the, the idea that, that uh, it, it would work uh, very well in terms of climate, in terms of, of uh, saving energy, but also it could provide uh, uh, um, more, more than just um, a performance house, but also more uses through this uh, extra space of the greenhouse. So this of the greenhouse. So this house is uh, is very simple. We worked very hard to arrive to make it in uh, in the course because uh, as young architect we we are not really prepared to work on the question of uh, economy. But we didn't want to uh, abandon any of uh, or, or to make no compromise. Uh, with our uh, initial intentions, which were to provide to this family a very uh, pleasant and very generous uh, house. So um, this house is uh, still important for us in uh, this way of uh, uh, extra space, of uh, doubling the space. Uh, it means uh, as much extra space as the program space, because we have the feeling that uh, the programs are always too small uh, to constrain, they are always uh, the compromise of uh, negotiations, not really for a house, but for uh, many uh, public buildings. Uh, they, are, they are a compromise between a cost and the and, uh, number of square meters. And we feel that uh, uh, in, uh, in this addition of extra space, uh, this allows this quality of appropriation and of freedom that we can give to the users. So the second project that we uh, did a few years later is uh, totally inspired uh, from this uh, first house and this program of uh, social housing, which was built in uh, Mulhouse. Mulhouse in, uh, is a small city in the, in the east of France, close to, to Basel. 
And uh, this program was um, is a social housing public social housing program which uh, was uh, commissioned uh, by a little uh, company of social housing, little operator, and uh, he uh, he asked to um, five architects architects to work on uh, the idea of uh, new housing for the 20th uh, century uh, because he found that. Uh, the, 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 the housing, the dwellings that uh, he was building everywhere, every year, um, as, as, uh, as uh, the owner, uh, was uh, too constrained uh, because of the standards of, uh, and the regulation of housing. And uh, the commission was very clear. He asked to the, the five architects uh, to be very free to make any proposition in terms of uh, space for housing. But the only, um, the only condition, the only restriction was uh, uh, that we have to uh, build inside the budget of the public social housing. It means at the time, in 90, uh, 2005, uh, an, an average of 75,000 uh, euros uh, for, uh, per, uh, for a dwelling of uh, two bedrooms. It means around 70, 75 square meters. So uh, here you see the, the master plan of the five architects, including uh, Jean Nouvel, who accepted to, to be part of, uh, of these uh, five teams. And uh, it was developed like, uh, like a workshop. But it was clear that uh, we didn't make a common project, because uh, uh, each of us had, uh, had a different background. Uh, but we, uh, we shared every two weeks uh, presentation of the project, like at school. And we uh, discussed about our project, and we tried to see what we could uh, uh, share in terms of construction so that we could make some uh, economies in, in the construction. So um, every uh, architect had a different way of developing the project. In, uh, in our part, we were on the first, uh, the, the one on the, the first um, ground. Uh, Jean Nouvel was on the, 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 the last part. Uh, Shigeruban here on the, um, the, 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 the foreground, and then uh, Duncan Lewis and Mathieu Poitevin, two other French architects. So we were um, totally involved to develop, like for the first house, uh, this idea of extra space in addition to the standard surface. It means that when uh, we, uh, we have to provide 75 square meters for two bedrooms uh, dwelling, we were really involved in producing 150 square meters. It means uh, an important extra space for uh, the given to the uh, appropriation. So uh, making that in, um, in the same budget is also uh, um, means uh, requires to, to work very hard on every element of the construction and to, uh, to define which are the priorities and uh, to avoid to make any complex uh, construction or details uh, that would cost a lot, uh, while our aim was to build uh, a very large dwelling. So we started to, uh, to provide uh, a very big, uh, an idea of a very big loft. It means uh, the, the biggest interesting construction that we could make on the site. So we could make uh, this uh, a construction of uh, 60 meters long and 20 meters large, and we decided uh, all the architects to make only two levels because it was uh, the average of uh, the construction uh, around. So our construction was uh, made with uh, two kind of uh, constructions, uh, uh, element, two kind of elements: the ground floor, which was an open space, a concrete open space, um, determined only by a few columns. Uh, and a concrete platform, so the, the, the space was open and uh, free for use. And on the top on this platform, uh, we built three uh, rows of uh, prefabricated uh, greenhouses, exactly the same that we can find in, uh, in the countryside to grow flowers, just adapted uh, to be built on a concrete platform. And our goal was uh, to give to every uh, dwelling we had to build 14 dwellings in uh, our uh, uh, plot. Uh, and the, 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 the goal for us was to give to uh, every dwelling the, the conditions of the two space, ground floor and the first floor. So the greenhouse uh, had a lot of interest because they, they provided the, 
a bioclimatic envelope that could be used uh, very uh, efficiently uh, to provide inside an intermediate climatic uh, climate, an intermediate climate that offered already seven to 10 degrees. So this, uh, this is the principle of the, the construction, the, the concrete platform and the rows of greenhouses. And that provided this, uh, this uh, big space where we built the maximum uh, uh, possible uh, on the plot, 20 meters uh, large and 60 meters long. So it was twice more that we needed for 14 uh, standard uh, dwellings. So afterwards, the, the, um, the project was uh, uh, how we can uh, divide this space into 14 uh, dwellings. And that was uh, the renderings that we produced for the project with this idea that uh, it's a kind of section. Uh, and every dwelling is uh, one, two, three, four, five. Every dwelling has part on ground floor, as a part on, on the first floor to take advantage of these two um, uh, special conditions. So the division uh, gave this, um, this plan, uh, one for every dwelling, one space on ground floor, one space on the first floor, and two orientations. Uh, and afterwards, we, de we, de we determined that uh, every uh, living room should have six to seven meters of glass facade, and every bedroom should have three meters of glass facade, and uh, it determined this uh, division uh, for the 14 uh, dwellings. And this is the construction after uh, completion. So it's, it's very transparent, but uh, we use all uh, the system that allows to control the climate as uh, large ventilation uh, on, the, on the roof of the greenhouses, large openings, and uh, special curtains, thermal curtains, that allow to uh, protect from, uh, especially from uh, in summer, uh, to get uh, a good uh, summer comfort. So this is a space before uh, the inhabitants uh, come. So this space, for example, is one of the biggest uh, apartments. It's uh, nearly 200 square meters for uh, four uh, bedrooms. And this is a space on the first floor. Uh, here there is uh, the, the kitchen, uh, two bedrooms, and a very large uh, living room of 60 uh, square meters. So you can see on the first, uh, uh, on the foreground, the, uh, the, the curtains of the greenhouse, the shedding, uh, which allows, uh, combined to the high, to the over ventilation, to provide in summer a quite a good uh, temperature inside. And in the, in the background, in the blue, are the thermal curtains uh, for the night or for uh, the high summer. So that's uh, uh, interesting for us to provide this, uh, uh, this space. Uh, which, um, which allows uh, after to the, to the inhabitants uh, to have a lot of freedom of use. So uh, it was interesting to see uh, after that, starting from this space, uh, the 14 families had a very different way of uh, using the space. And uh, uh, it's, it's uh, very interesting to see how uh, giving more space uh, brings a, a kind of uh, creativity from uh, the inhabitants. So we respected the, the budget in, uh, in, in uh, building this uh, construction because we, uh, we used carefully the, some, uh, some elements that were, that were uh, optimized, like the dimension of the sliding uh, transparent doors. Uh, so it's, it's a very precise work of, uh, of uh, design and details and uh, working with uh, um, the, the, um, the companies of uh, materials to see which are the most uh, optimized in, um, in, in uh, the relation between uh, performance, technical performance, and the cost. So here, this is a 130 square meters, uh, including a winter garden of 32 square meters. Uh, the standard requested for such two bedrooms dwelling is 70 square meters, and the construction cost was exactly the same over 70 uh, square meters uh, dwelling. And that was very important to make it because uh, one of the problems that we meet uh, when uh, an architect proposed for housing to build more for the same uh, cost or for uh, more, uh, immediately, and especially for uh, rented housing, uh, 
the owner um, um, opposes uh, the, the principle that if it is bigger, they should rent it uh, more. And uh, if it's the case, it's, uh, it's no more affordable for social housing. So it's very important to have uh, very early in the process of projects this uh, discussion with the owner about uh, the economy, about the cost, and what happens if afterwards, for the same budget of construction, we produce more. Of course, we didn't agree that he would rent more. So uh, he was really, uh, the, the owner was uh, very committed in, uh, in, uh, in this project, so we agreed together, and we committed together that uh, if we, uh, at the end, build for less, uh, big, uh, more for, for the same budget, he will rent not in function of the surface, but in function of the typology. So the, the rent is exactly the same as uh, it could rent a 70 square meters uh, standard uh, dwelling. So all these questions, which are not really the architectural project, but which are uh, periphery of the project, are very important because uh, if, as an architect, if you don't uh, enter this question, if you don't if you are not aware of this question, uh, the project at the end uh, has no chance to be uh, completed or no chance to meet, uh, to meet uh, the goals. So one of these uh, dwellings, so, um, the ground floor of the, this, uh, the same up, uh, this apartment. The garage is, uh, is, um, is, is done exactly as a normal room because uh, many people don't have cars, so they can use it immediately as an extra space. Uh, for the everyday uh, use. Um, in, in the background, it's uh, a big uh, bedroom with a little bathroom that can be independent for, uh, for um, an elder person or for young persons in the family. And this is the first floor with uh, this very large living room, bedroom. And what is interesting also in this project, and uh, it was a discussion uh, during the process with uh, the owner, we propose not to make partitions inside the dwelling uh, because we considered that, uh, as in a loft, the, the, the distance, um, the, um, the oversize uh, of the space uh, could, could uh, act in a, way, in a way, in some way, like partitions. So the, the owner agreed that we could make this experience, but he asked to us that uh, because he he was afraid that uh, the families don't like uh, this idea of open space. And uh, we agreed together that uh, we will come during two years, every six months, to have meetings with uh, the families. And if any family wanted to make partition, we should uh, provide the partitions and uh, build partitions. Uh, and in fact, after the two years, uh, no family uh, has asked for partitions. So that was uh, very interesting that we could make this uh, experience uh, because at the end, uh, the, the conclusion was uh, interesting. So this extra space here in this case is 32 square meters with all the systems of uh, shading, uh, which are absolutely necessary uh, with transparent architecture to create a good uh, comfort summer and winter. And uh, the pinks, uh, the pink curtains are uh, thermal curtains which are behind the glass windows and they are specially uh, efficient uh, in winter in the night. So it's, um, it's a construction which is uh, very low tech uh, and it's based on uh, the um, participation of inhabitants to use all the systems in the best way uh, when, it's, uh, when they have to to close uh, the winter gardens, to close uh, the uh, sliding doors, uh, to close the curtains, or to open everything. And uh, we just explained uh, some uh, little uh, basic uh, information at the beginning, but in fact, it becomes very, uh, very natural, and uh, the, the people understand very well how they can use uh, all these uh, different systems. So again, a four-bedroom uh, dwelling. This is the same as. Uh, I, show, uh, I showed before without uh, the furniture. So it's interesting to see the, uh, how the appropriation, how the space allow uh, this uh, uh, appropriation of uh, the family. 
So it's already an old project that we completed uh, 10 years ago. Uh, but it's uh, still interesting uh, in, in some points and uh, uh, we, we have tried afterwards to, uh, to develop. What was interesting also is uh, at the time, uh, it was the beginning of the uh, regulations about uh, saving energy and, and we had a lot of problems to, uh, to prove that it was working because uh, the models uh, for calculation uh, were not, um, didn't allow to make it. And uh, we had to, we had really to struggle uh, to show that uh, this construction was uh, more efficient than a very basic one. Uh, but finally, we, we arrived to, to convince uh, the authorities and uh, we arrived to, uh, to uh, with um, engineers to, uh, to define the, the good calculation. Uh, and, uh, for example, now in France, uh, 10 years later, they have step-by-step -step changed the regulation. And, for example, the curtains and the winter gardens uh, are now integrating, integrated in the software uh, and the models of calculation. And uh, we can uh, give them the right value uh, in the thermal um, condition of uh, the construction. Uh, for the same owner, because at, at the end it was... Uh, very much convinced of this first uh, project, and uh, he decided to make a second one in, uh, in the same city, but in a more dense, uh, dense uh, neighborhood. Uh, and he asked to us uh, to work um, on this project, and uh, uh, it was intended that, um, of course, if he was uh, asking to us, he, he wanted the same, uh, that we work in the same spirit, spirit and that we develop. Uh, also uh, very large uh, housing. It's, again, it's uh, social housing. Uh, the master plan was done by uh, the, an urban planner, so we didn't, we didn't have to design uh, the, the master plan, but we, uh, we had to, uh, to design the, the construction. So um, here again, it was uh, interesting. The, the process was interesting because um, at, uh, at the beginning, the, 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 the rules of the master plan allowed to make uh, 70 small dwellings. Uh, and um, our client uh, was, um, but it was uh, standard dwellings with uh, small surfaces. And uh, our client is, didn't want to make it. And uh, he, uh, he went to, uh, to discuss with the, the mayor of the city the possibility of uh, canceling uh, uh, the rules on uh, this plot. And uh, the mayor agreed that we, uh, we start, we start um, uh, by doing a project and then we come back to present the project and they will adjust the rules uh, for this plot after uh, uh, having uh, s s seen the project. It's uh, what we did and uh, we developed, we developed uh, 60 uh, very large dwellings. Uh, some of them are nearly 200, 220 square meters for families of uh, four to five uh, person, uh, they are all. Uh, they have. They have. They have all two orientations. Uh, we have um, uh, about ten uh, different types of um, of dwellings, uh, from the single level to the duplex uh, level. Uh, and uh, this is a result now of uh, uh, this project, which uh, which was completed uh, one year ago. So here again, the, the rent was uh, calculated, not in function of the surface, but uh, in function of the typology. So in, inside, we have uh, common gardens and uh, some dwellings. Uh, all the dwellings have um, a winter garden in front of the, uh, the, the, the living room and the kitchen, uh, plus a little terrace or a balcony for those who are on the, on the levels. Um, the width of the, the living room and kitchen is uh, 10 meters. It's uh, this large uh, sliding uh, glass uh, doors of 10 meters, and the winter gardens is uh, 3 meters uh, wide. So the construction is, uh, is very simple. We used uh, concrete uh, pre-stressed uh, slab so that we can have uh, 10 meters uh, uh, without any uh, columns or, uh, and the, the, the space of the dwellings 
uh, is not constrained by any uh, structural element like wall or, uh, or columns. So it's, uh, uh, it's a place uh, where the earthquake uh, can, can be very, um, there is a high level of uh, earthquake, so it's why we have the, this, this uh, structure in the staircase uh, in order to allow uh, not to, uh, to have uh, important structures uh, inside the buildings. Uh, the last level dwellings and the roofs. Again, it's uh, rented social housing, public rented social housing. And this would the garden of uh, three meters uh, large. And for the last level uh, dwellings, it's uh, nearly uh, four meters 0.5 uh, high. Inhabiting uh, a wonderful place uh, is also a very interesting challenge. It's, uh, this is a little house that we did uh, 20 years ago on, uh, uh, on the southwest of France. And uh, the challenge was uh, very clear. We, we were in... Uh, on the sand dune in a forest along uh, the, the Arcachon Bay. Uh, and the clients, uh, our clients wanted to, to build um, a summer holiday house on uh, this place. But they liked very much the place uh, without any construction because of this uh, forest, because of the sand dune. So the challenge was uh, how to build um, an architecture which uh, keeps all the qualities of the site uh, with, uh, with which uh, don't, uh, doesn't disturb anything, which doesn't damage anything. So we decided uh, uh, very fast that uh, we will keep all the trees, that we will not cut any trees on the plot. We had uh, more than 45 pine trees. And the second decision was to raise up the house at four meters above ground uh, because of the fragility of the dune and also because we, we, uh, we knew that we will uh, take the best view uh, by uh, doing that. After the construction is, uh, is made with uh, very small steel elements uh, because uh, we couldn't have any uh, uh, tracks or, uh, or machines on the site, again, uh, to uh, protect as much as possible the natural uh, conditions. Uh, the foundations are, are like uh, needles in, uh, in, uh, in the sand without any connection uh, between uh, the needles and all the structure is, uh, all the stability of the structure is made in, uh, in, the, in the floors. So that's uh, the, the section. And it's very important to, uh, uh, for us to be uh, very delicate with the existing. First, uh, a project sta start by the observation. Uh, what we have in hands, what are the, the qualities, what are the the value that we, that we have in hands and uh, that we should not lose uh, after the, the project. So this is uh, the plan with uh, trees uh, which are crossing the, uh, the house. The construction is very simple and there are some trees uh, crossing the construction, but without any uh, uh, scenography, they are just uh, crossing where, where they are. And the structure of the house has not been determined in function of the trees. So working with the existing uh, is for us something interesting. We are um, interested by the existing situation uh, that we don't see as uh, constraints, uh, but we see in, uh, in the existing uh, an opportunity, and uh, uh, we like to uh, observe with a lot of uh, accuracy uh, this uh, situation to, to take the maximum of uh, the existing qualities in uh, the project, and uh, we consider that uh, the, the existing makes a part of the project. So this, um, all these projects that I will show now are uh, this, um, the project about transformation, about reuse, and especially um, of the, the reuse of uh, uh, the social, uh, modernist social housing. 
uh, our, uh, our attitude is uh, um, never demolish to do more and, uh, and uh, better. So the, this, um, this uh, example is, uh, we didn't really work on it because it uh, doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but we, uh, we developed some uh, years ago, more than 10 years ago, uh, a study about uh, the transformation of uh, these places instead of uh, demolition. And we did these studies um, at, um, at uh, a time when uh, in France an important program of uh, urban renovation was uh, decided by the government. And this program was based on, on, based on the demolition and rebuild of more than 200,000 uh, dwellings built in the 60s, 70s, uh, f uh, with a, a huge budget of more than 18 billions uh, of uh, euros. And this program was supposed to be uh, completed in uh, five to uh, six years. So at the time, we, uh, we were a little bit uh, um, shocked by this um, idea of uh, demolishing something which is not at the end of the life, of course, uh, we cannot say that uh, uh, it's uh, still as uh, satisfactory, that the conditions of light are, are the best, uh, but the demolition is a, a very violent uh, action. And we were convinced that something different could be done, starting from the existing, which was more uh, generous, more uh, economical, and more attentive to, uh, to people uh, living in, the, in uh, this uh, in, in uh, these uh, uh, places. So we did this uh, study that we named uh, PLUS, and we studied uh, uh, um, certain uh, examples uh, that we took in the program, the national program, and they were scheduled to be uh, demolished. So we, we studied very carefully in all the aspects, structure, space, uh, technical systems, economy, cost of uh, transformation. And we arrived to the conclusion of, uh, on these uh, different examples, uh, which, which are very different uh, situation, different uh, construction systems. We uh, arrived to the conclusion that uh, compared to the 150,000 uh, euros, uh, which was uh, uh, planned by the government to demolish and rebuild one dwelling, uh, for uh, the, the, the amount of uh, 70,000 to 60,000, it was possible to make a very, uh, very good transformation and to bring uh, these buildings again in a new life in, uh, uh, for, for uh, a long time. So it means that uh, uh, for one third, uh, it was possible to make uh, this uh, very good quality of the transformation instead of uh, demolition. And it was easy to... Uh, to understand that for many of these uh, uh, dwellings built in the 60s, 70s, um, it could have been better if architects had worked better at the time. Some architects worked very, very well, uh, like for these uh, buildings in France in, uh, made by uh, Fernand Pouillon, Le Point du Jour, in, uh, in, the, in the suburb of Paris. And uh, they have been made with the same constructing systems uh, it's social housing uh, at the same time as, for example, this uh, building. And now, uh, these buildings uh, have, have no problem. People who are living there, they don't want to leave. Uh, the quality remains very good uh, 50 years or 60 years later. Um, because there was, at, uh, at the beginning, um, a, a good design, a good generosity of space, a good, uh, a good way of thinking housing not only as a big amount of units that they have to build in a very short time, but there was a work of uh, architecture uh, about what is a good housing, uh, what makes good conditions of living, and these conditions that we see there that are the same that were built in the 60s for this building, they are still relevant and they don't need any transformation. So uh, we came to the, to the principle that uh, on the basic buildings, which have, have not these qualities, it could be possible to make it now by uh, changing the facade, opening, uh, making transformation, giving more space, changing the, the systems, 
Uh, and uh, that was an opportunity to bring these buildings in a very good uh, quality for 50,000 or 60,000 uh, euros. So uh, that's important that um, the trans to, to understand that finally a transformation is, uh, is not the question of breaking the form or changing the image or changing the facade. This uh, transformation um, starts from the interior. It's a question of improving the space and the quality of living for its inhabitants. So this study didn't have a lot of uh, success when we presented it to the, uh, to the different uh, ministries involved in uh, this national program. The, the study was uh, published in Spain, uh, but uh, finally, a few years later, we uh, applied to this competition in Paris for the transformation of this uh, uh, building, uh, which uh, belongs to the city of Paris. It's rented social housing. And the city wanted to make an experience of uh, transformation instead of demolition. So the, what we proposed for the, the competition was, uh, again, to, uh, not to consider the shape of the building. To, uh, in fact, we didn't care that, uh, care that it's a block or a tower. Uh, and we were not involved in changing the form. We were much involved in uh, starting from the interior to check, to, to, to analyze, to check which were the qualities that we had to keep and uh, what was missing that we should bring, that we should improve through the project. So we proposed to, uh, uh, to make um, extensions to, uh, uh, around the block. In white, it's uh, the existing block. Uh, in color, it's uh, the extension of floors around uh, to bring more space, uh, which was uh, missing for this uh, uh, apartments. And the second point was uh, that uh, we proposed to make these works without removing the inhabitants. It means in situation of uh, occupied uh, space. So we, uh, we won the competition through this uh, project and after we developed uh, the project. So uh, it was very important to work uh, very hard on the, the method of construction uh, because uh, the, the people were not leaving the building, so it should, it should, uh, it should be uh, fast built. So it's why we propose to work with uh, prefabricated uh, modules of uh, 7 uh, meters 0.5 long and 3 meters large uh, that could be um, applied in, in front of the facade, uh, built out of the side, and uh, built like uh, scaffolding, scaffolding, while we could also at the same time remove the existing facade that uh, contains also uh, asbestos. And the process was this one. This building, uh, the facade of this building were light facades, so we, we could remove them uh, without uh, very big uh, works. And uh, we built in front uh, these uh, extensions made with uh, steel. And uh, the change from the inside uh, that was the situation uh, that we found with uh, uh, the, the original facade of uh, the 60s, and the second one was a renovated facade of uh, 1983. So, and that was that is the transformation produced by this uh, extension. Uh, doing that, this extension is also provi providing the, an interesting insulation uh, that allowed to cut into. Uh, more than into the uh, energy consumption for the heating of the building without having too many uh, uh, sophisticated system and just with uh, changing the, uh, some elements of the heating. So we kept, uh, when uh, uh, people stayed in the dwellings, we kept uh, as, uh, as it was. This lady, for example, didn't want to change anything inside, so we took care not to, just to change after the facade and to bring this uh, extension that allows to develop uh, the, the use um, out of uh, the original uh, dwelling. Uh, the glass facade is, uh, is where uh, we have the, uh, the, thermal, uh, the, the, the thermal protection. 
uh, and the winter garden is in an uh, intermediate space which is not heated. And the transformation uh, comes from this uh, change from the inside, uh, which is also very radical. So the cost of the transformation was uh, nearly 100,000 euros because uh, the, it's in Paris, it was very difficult to make the works there. But uh, the, the owner, before uh, launching the competition, has estimated the cost of demolition and rebuild uh, to 200,000 uh, euros per dwelling. It means that for half of the budget, they could have this uh, uh, important uh, transformation, and we didn't remove. The families who were there before stayed uh, during uh, the process and after. So this is another project that we are completing uh, in, in, the same, uh, uh, in the same process and the same concept in uh, Bordeaux. That's a very big neighborhood, uh, which is now in the city center, which uh, was built in um, the 60s. And uh, we applied to the competition for the, the two big blocks, uh, which are in the front, and the little yellow uh, one. It's um, an amount of 530 uh, dwellings. So again, the city of Bordeaux uh, studied the possibility of uh, demolition and rebuild, uh, but the main problem was uh, uh, to build before 500 dwellings to relocate uh, the uh, inhabitants. So this, uh, the, the building that were repainted uh, 20 years ago, uh, but didn't uh, change um, anything in, uh, in uh, the quality of the building. So on the inside, it's uh, amazing that when, you vis when we visited uh, the dwellings, you, uh, we totally forgot uh, the shape, that it was two big blocks. Uh, and uh, we, after we had in mind that uh, we were working on 530 different situations, uh, because it's uh, what we found with uh, all these uh, interiors, uh, all different, uh, which are uh, the result uh, of uh, the uh, involvement and the appropriation of uh, the families. So the project here is uh, because we had uh, the, the, it's a very narrow building and uh, uh, two thirds of the, of the dwellings have uh, two orientations. So we propose to have uh, an extension only on the south side uh, because uh, uh, it, it was for us more important to make a bigger extension on south than two extensions north and, and south. And uh, we propose to, uh, to, to open all the windows to cut the handrails so that it was uh, possible from any room uh, to move directly to the winter garden. And this was applied to uh, all the the long uh, block, uh, which is divided in uh, five uh, joint blocks with uh, each of them as uh, a staircase, elevators, and uh, we propose also to add uh, some uh, uh, new elevators uh, to give uh, more um, facility of access in the 15 levels. And on the roof uh, top, we had also uh, four uh, additional uh, apartments. So the process um, here is the same. Again, uh, uh, the, it was made uh, in the condition of uh, uh, people inside. They didn't move. Uh, so um, the process, uh, again, was uh, very carefully uh, defined. Uh, here we have the, the construction is in uh, concrete because we have a lot of space around uh, to uh, make the prefabrication of the, the elements and uh, it was uh, built in front. Afterwards, we cut the handrails, uh, and uh, the um, agreement that we had with uh, the owner that uh, um, making the extension is not disturbing for the inhabitant because it's a process which is outside, but for the openings of the um, windows and replaced by the new, win the new sliding doors, uh, we... Um, we uh, engaged, we, com we were committed to make it in two days for one apartment, because uh, more than two days, it was necessary to remove the, the family. So we started with uh, the process with uh, the small uh, uh, building. The cost of the transformation is uh, uh, 45,000 euros per dwelling, uh, 
which is um, a very good value uh, for the, the owner. It's uh, the public uh, social housing uh, company of the city of Bordeaux. And this is, uh, after the, afterwards, uh, the transform uh, building. So this, uh, these extensions are uh, totally uh, independent of the existing. You can see on the ground uh, the new columns and the new foundations because uh, we didn't uh, uh, ask to the existing to support the new construction. And uh, uh, the schedule of uh, extension was uh, uh, more or less uh, seven uh, modules uh, a day. So the process is this one, the, 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 the element of floor uh, arrived, they built uh, the handrail, uh, after they place it on, uh, on the columns, and uh, then they start the, the level above, uh, with uh, just uh, this, uh, they prepared um, to fix uh, the, the, the other. And when we have built uh, three levels, we can start the process of opening uh, the, the windows because of the security is, uh, is ensured. And this process of uh, opening and uh, uh, building, the, um, building the new uh, glass facade is, uh, as I said before, uh, two days. So after what uh, was longer was uh, the interior finishes, uh, but the, the process of extension was uh, quite uh, fast and uh, and uh, well done by the contractor. So we place inside that one meters uh, uh, protection. Then when it's open, uh, after the family can come back. And, uh, and the transformation of the building again is, uh, is quite radical. We did also some new uh, entrances new elevators. And just uh, some numbers that you can uh, show very fast. And uh, just to show, to show that uh, in terms of uh, energy saving, this uh, building uh, before and, uh, was uh, quite bad, uh, with 100 uh, 16 uh, kilowatt per uh, square meter per year, and after the, this extension uh, and an insulation of the north facade and changing some uh, regulations in the heating, uh, we, uh, um, we reduce the, the consumption for the heating to 20. The cost is uh, 45,000 euros per dwelling, and uh, uh, there was uh, no increase of the rent. That was uh, the, uh, the commitment of the, the owner towards the inhabitants. So just uh, very fast, some uh, pictures before and after. And uh, it's amazing to see that uh, after opening uh, the access to the winter gardens, it takes uh, less than two weeks to be totally full up by new furniture, by the new uh, use. Uh, for the people, and uh, many of them, they are very creative too. Uh, uh, and also they are helped by the, the market of furniture that provide very cheap uh, sofa or plastic sofa or coming from China. So many of them, they have the same furniture, but they arrange it in a in very different way. So before this uh, small window and after this possibility of moving from uh, inside to the winter garden from all uh, the rooms. The extension here is uh, four meters, three meters for the winter garden and one meter for the balcony. And the last uh, part for the, of um, this uh, lecture will, is about um, the pub public space, how to reinvent the public space to create this uh, freedom of use. Inhabiting for us is not only uh, uh, applied to uh, housing. Inhabiting is, uh, 
is the fact to be on a place and to use a space. So it works for any kind of space, a museum, a school, or anywhere. So this, is, uh, this project is uh, at Tokyo in Paris, and uh, we had to work on it on two steps. The first one was in 2000, and the second one in 2012. And uh, this was a museum uh, built in, uh, in uh, 1937 for the um, Universal Exhibition in Paris. But from the beginning, it was a museum, the National Muse Contemporary Art Museum. And this uh, building knew uh, a very chaotic history uh, after, the old, uh, after the museum moved to the Centre Pompidou and it became different um, museum for photography, cinema, uh, until the 90s uh, when uh, uh, the government decided to make an important refurbishment uh, to make uh, Palais for Cinema. Uh, but this Palais for Cinema was stopped after a few years of studies and a few, uh, one year of uh, construction, and it, was, uh, sta it stayed in, uh, in this situation during a few years with a lot of damage uh, because the rain was uh, coming inside, pigeons, squats, and, uh, and so on. And finally, the government decided to, uh, to uh, install here a very small project for uh, young contemporary creation with a budget of 3 million euros, where uh, while the surface is uh, 26,000 square meters. So it means that the, 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 the program was to uh, to make a temporary installation and not a renovation. So we applied for, for the competition and uh, we won for the competition and we proposed a, a very simple uh, uh, design that, uh, that was, uh, finally, the, the architecture was uh, for us already very interesting. And uh, we didn't uh, find necessary to, uh, in the context of a temporary installation, we didn't find it interesting to, to add uh, too many details, too many elements of new architecture, but just make uh, the necessary works that would allow to open uh, this place again for exhibition for the public uh, in this idea of a temporary uh, exhibition. So we did, uh, instead of uh, doing uh, really uh, plans and sections, uh, we did more a text and uh, a list of uh, works uh, with a hierarchy of importance, starting from uh, reinforcement of structures, elevators, stairs, uh, all, the, all the systems. And uh, we arrived to, the, um, to estimate that uh, with uh, three millions, we could make these uh, important works, and afterwards we could open the building again, but without any money to make uh, finishes, plaster or new floors, just uh, cleaning the space. So the space were totally amazing with, uh, uh, from the basement to the first, to the last level. It means four levels with uh, different uh, qualities of space, of light, from the dark space to the very uh, uh, light uh, rooms, like this one with uh, these large openings on, uh, on, uh, on the river, or uh, the last level with a transparent uh, roof. And uh, this was an, it's an interesting image because it seems that we didn't do a lot of things, but in fact, the essential was done so that uh, the public uh, could again uh, come uh, inside. But uh, the, for us, the architecture was uh, uh, sufficiently strong uh, to accept this uh, uncertainty of, uh, of finishes uh, uh, inside. So, and, uh, so it worked for uh, nearly eight years, and after the, the we, we opened in 2000, 7,000 square meters, and uh, after the government decided that finally they will uh, put another budget of 13 millions uh, to uh, complete uh, these uh, works, uh, because they, with the crisis, uh, they, they, they knew that they, could not, uh, they couldn't make a very high, very high renovation, uh, that would cost maybe more than uh, 100 million. So they decided to postpone this idea of a renovation and to complete the, the works on uh, all the surface. And for the second phase, we, uh, phase of works, we opened uh, all the, the 20,000 uh, remaining uh, square meters, uh, which were not open in the building. 
So the, and the project is based on uh, this uh, addition of uh, new elements uh, which are totally independent in terms of the design, of details, of materials, but the addition between uh, the existing and these new materials create uh, something interesting. And there are always now uh, very interesting exhibitions that use uh, all the uh, possible uh, surface. Uh, sometimes an artist uh, uh, is uh, invited to, uh, to exhibit on all the 20,000 uh, square meters of exhibition. Sometimes it's a different uh, little exhibition, but uh, the director is uh, very dynamic and there is always uh, exhibitions uh, open on, uh, very, very good exhibitions open in this space. It's open from uh, midday to midnight. Uh, and uh, it's, what is interesting is uh, the freedom um, to access to this uh, space. It's not a uh, contemporary art um, museum which seems to be uh, just um, uh, open for some uh, few who knows about contemporary art. Uh, everyone uh, feel free to enter, even those who think that they, it's not for them, but the space is um, enough simple, enough familiar, so that everyone can, uh, uh, can come in and uh, look what, uh, what happens, even if for many visitors, uh, they are not really uh, um, used to, uh, to go to a contemporary art uh, museums. So we discovered some uh, interesting spaces, like this one, which was, uh, since the beginning, it was closed, uh, because there were not uh, security exist, exits. So from the beginning, in 37, it was just uh, open for the first day, and afterwards they, they, they put walls to close the doors, and uh, this uh, space was uh, we discovered when uh, we uh, opened uh, the, the walls and that we found this uh, space. So we use also the dark space to make uh, exhibitions that are dark, and we really struggle to give the spaces to uh, the exhibition and not for uh, storage. This is not a museum, so they don't need a lot of storage, and uh, we really insisted. So that all the spaces, including this one, which are in the basement, could be open to the public and to the, uh, to the artist. And uh, our aim, of course, would, uh, would have been that uh, even when there is no exhibition, the public could uh, move inside the space and uh, look at the architecture. But for many reasons, and especially uh, management reasons, when there is no exhibition, uh, it's closed. So maybe it's something that the, regret, the regrets we can have on uh, this space is that it's not uh, enough open uh, when it's uh, empty. Um, another project which uh, we like also very much is the School for Management that we did in uh, the city of Bordeaux. It's uh, uh, part of the University of Bordeaux, but one of the only buildings that have been uh, built inside the city and which is not in the campus at uh, 10 kilometers uh, far away from the center. So this is um, a project for uh, 3,000 students with uh, four different departments of uh, 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 studies about uh, management. So it's a building which has a lot of uh, very small rooms, uh, little uh, classrooms, little offices, and some uh, common spaces. And our um, idea was uh, uh, what could we find uh, that could create an identity to this uh, building and bring a kind of uh, poetry uh, to this place where they, they, they study uh, so uh, boring uh, disciplines. And uh, we, we propose this idea of uh, creating a, a, a rose tree uh, all around uh, the building on the facade. And we planted uh, uh, 700 um, uh, plants of uh, rose trees uh, all around that uh, creates this kind of uh, filter and that uh, also is uh, totally uh, uh, par uh, a part of uh, uh, what is um, teached in, uh, inside. So that's uh, the plants with uh, uh, the plant which is very uh, regulated by all these uh, rooms and uh, these uh, four departments with uh, the patio. 
And uh, in the red, it's a collection of uh, rose trees, uh, which we have planted. It's a representation of the facade. So, and uh, it took a few years to become uh, very strong, but now it's um, it's, very, it's really fantastic. And uh, from the spring to the uh, to September, to have this. Uh, the flowering of uh, flowers that transform quite uh, radically the, the image of uh, this uh, building and also the, the, the perception of the city from the inside through this uh, filter of uh, flowers. Another building is um, a school of architecture in the city of Nantes, and um, it was a competition that uh, we, we did this project after a competition. And um, finally, this project is very close to uh, uh, the, um, the concept that we developed for housing with uh, this extra space uh, given to not here for dwellings, but to the studios of, uh, uh, of uh, the school. In addition of uh, every space, we have the, the same amount of uh, free space which is given to, uh, to the, uh, the classroom or to the studio of project. And this project was based on the idea that uh, what is uh, so necessary to have more space in the School of Architecture? For us, it's uh, clear that the School of Architecture is not only a school. Uh, in the School of Architecture, every year, every uh, they, they, they there are a lot of studies, a lot of debates, a lot of discussions, uh, a big knowledge about the city, about architecture, uh, which is uh, many times staying inside the, the school, and no one uh, has finally the possibility of uh, being informed of uh, all these uh, uh, this, uh, interesting studies about uh, the city, about the landscape, about architecture. So the idea that was also inspired by uh, a little brief from uh, the director and from the, some professors, uh, the, the school comes from this idea that uh, the school should be more open uh, to the city and becomes a place for the public debate about what happens in the city. Um, it's very important that the school or architecture takes part uh, to the decisions, to the studies uh, that happens in the city. It's not. Uh, it's, it's uh, not interesting that the, these things are separated. Uh, because in a, in a school, again, there are a lot of interesting uh, researches that could be uh, given or bring uh, in, the in the debate on urban planning, on uh, architecture. And to make this, it's important to give the place so that the school can welcome, can uh, shelter all these new activities. So here we, are, we were in a master plan of uh, Alexandre Shemetov, who did already all the public space. And the plot uh, for the school was much bigger than what we needed for the program. But we found more interesting to, uh, to create public space inside the school more than outside the school, because uh, the, the neighborhood has already a lot of public uh, outside spaces. So the envelope of the school, of the school became uh, much bigger. And while the program um, required was 9,000 square meters, we have finally developed more than 20,000 square meters of, uh, of course, the basic program with classroom, the library, and uh, so on, the studios for teaching. But uh, the, there is the same amount of a free space that must be used by the students who, uh, and, and uh, the professors, and they must develop projects inside this extra space connected to the programmatic space. Uh, so that was uh, the, the main goal for, for uh, this uh, project. So the project is uh, very generous, including the, uh, the, um, the auditorium, which is not only an auditorium for courses, but they can have also uh, events or, or uh, cinema or anything else, lectures. So the, the ground floor is, uh, the, is always uh, connected to the outside. On the ground floor, there are just a few pedagogical functions. 
There are, it's much more space like this one with uh, workshops that can be easily transformed for a public uh, activity. Here it's a space for, of 900, 900 square meters where it's possible to make uh, models at the scale one to one, uh, nine, nine meters under ceiling. And the school is much more uh, um, a principle of uh, big floors where it's possible to rebuild on these uh, big floors. So the space allows all these uh, activities, including uh, making concerts, parties for the students. So again, this, um, it was important to, uh, uh, in this proposition, in this project, that uh, we uh, could propose this uh, extra space, but without uh, an extra budget. It means in the budget that was given uh, initially for the competition, during the competition. So again, we worked uh, um, very carefully and very precisely on uh, the structures. Uh, in order to use the most efficient structure for the uh, uh, low cost, uh, less cost, cost as possible, and to develop this uh, uh, large open space on the grid of 10 meters by 10 meters, and uh, the ceilings are the first uh, ceiling. The first floor is at nine meters, the second at seven meters, and the third is at uh, also uh, seven meters. So here it's. Uh, uh, precisely an extra space, uh, which is connected to the two levels of uh, studios. It means that every studio of 100 square meters has the equivalent of 100 square meters free of function, and the use of this space is to be negotiated between the four studios uh, they will share uh, this space. So sometimes they can develop this kind of uh, workshop. It's, um, it's an experience of uh, uh, redesigning, uh, reinterpreting the plan of Berlin. But it's also the place for discussions. Or sometimes there is nothing. Or it's also uh, students' initiatives, like here, this uh, installation uh, of uh, nets and uh, piano. Yeah, it's a, it's a studio of a project connected with uh, its uh, extra space. And uh, the space is, uh, is much more uh, an infrastructure than a building. With all these large openings, um, the view is uh, extended uh, very far away, and, uh, and uh, the building has no limit, because uh, the city, the landscape, is coming inside uh, through this uh, with very large um, openings and platforms. There is a very big ramp which is running from the ground floor to every level and to the last level. Uh, this ramp has a very slow uh, slope uh, so that uh, you can walk, you can bike, but also, uh, if necessary, it's possible to go with a car to bring materials, for example, on the, on the roof. So it runs, uh, the ramp runs at every level in summer, it's the main, uh, it's the main space for, the, uh, for the, um, the mobility inside the school, while in uh, winter, it's much more the stairs inside, but in summer, it becomes uh, uh, the, the, the most used space. And it's also open uh, for the public that can go on the roof, which is a very big square, uh, 2,500 2, square meters public square uh, at the uh, 24 meters high that allows to uh, look at the city but also to make uh, some events like uh, this one which is uh, part of uh, a contemporary art uh, event that happens every year in the city of Nantes. The name is uh, Le Voyage à Nantes, the trip to Nantes. And it's uh, an artistic e event with a lot of uh, artworks uh, spread in the city and one is, uh, is done in, on the roof of the city. And for example, the construction of uh, uh, the structure for the, for the screen was part of the studio and was made uh, in, the, in the context of a studio of students that designed 
the structure for the screen and for the organization of uh, this uh, summer theme. And the last project is, uh, again, um, a public space. Uh, it's also the, um, the project that we built after competition, and uh, the program was uh, to, uh, to, to uh, create a contemporary art, public contemporary art gallery uh, to show a public uh, collection of uh, uh, art pieces. And we were supposed to, uh, to build it inside the existing building. So this uh, building was uh, alone on, on uh, the place, and uh, uh, it was part of a uh, very important, uh, uh, in, sorry, very important uh, industrial site, which was totally destroyed uh, 20 years ago. And this building was uh, kept because it was represented more or less uh, the memory of the site, because it was uh, um, the place where they, they completed the boats, bef be boats before uh, they moved to the sea. So for the citizen of the, of, the, of the city, it was a very important space. And the competition was uh, how to, um, to put inside uh, this uh, contemporary art center. It means uh, uh, around 7,000 square meters with half for the storage and uh, in a very special condition and half for uh, exhibition room. And the project that we proposed, because uh, after visiting the site, we were totally impressed by this uh, space, which was empty, and uh, we had uh, very fast the feeling that uh, it was a mistake to fill this space, uh, and it's uh, why we uh, proposed uh, to keep it as it is, and to build a twin uh, just on the side, uh, totally new, uh, with a new structure, uh, that could provide uh, the best conditions for a contemporary art center of uh, air conditioning and, and without having to transform uh, too much uh, the existing building to bring it to the new normatives that would have changed radically the, the, the quality of architecture. So on the left, we, le we kept the building with uh, this uh, huge uh, space inside. So we found this uh, situation with an empty space and uh, that was amazing. And um, after we studied, uh, we studied, we studied uh, all the same the principle of making floor inside, but finally we came back to our first intuition and we decided to keep it as it is and to make this uh, uh, additional uh, building where we could uh, do inside this uh, uh, exhibition room that, uh, uh, as it was uh, required. Uh, the staircase, which are out of uh, uh, the block, the concrete block of the storage and the exhibition rooms, so that uh, the, the visitors is always moving between uh, art, um, the exhibition of art, and the space for vertical circula circulations where you can see uh, the landscape and the sea uh, around. And the, uh, this level is uh, uh, an extra space which is given by uh, this block of concrete which uh, shelters uh, the storage. And um, the, the, the roof of this block allows to create this space under this uh, transparent roof. So the, the new building is made with uh, this big transparent envelope and inside a concrete block uh, where we could provide uh, the best um, uh, artificial condition to uh, conserve uh, the artworks. So that's for us. Uh, uh, if I come back to the, the principle of the first project, in fact, uh, uh, we come back to this idea of uh, generosity of space for uh, quality of use and for giving uh, freedom to people to not only to, uh, to have a function, but also to create their own appropriation uh, of a place. Thank you very much. <laughs>